Okay, so this is Batacera on the Orange Pi 5, and this is the 4 gig model, the base model, and uh, it runs really well, at, even at three times resolution. Thanks to Munka for sending me this build. I did a shorts video the other day on it. Uh, it is really good. Um, controller support's a bit weird. Uh, the only controller I've got, and I've got loads of controllers that would work with it and was recognized as the Stadia controller, which is, which is really surprising. But, and uh, I did a shorts video on this because this is gonna get Bluetooth support soon. Obviously the Orange Pi 5 doesn't have Bluetooth built in. But uh, let's have a look at the game and show you how well it runs because it is remarkable how well it runs. Now we won't talk about the shape of the tires and also what this guy is doing on the right hand side near the graffiti. Oh, we stop now. Um, but uh, the palm trees look great. Look at the signs. Uh, so if I press the left button, I can look around. The signs are so detailed and so crisp looking. For a mobile game, you can read the uh, registration plate on the bike. Uh, and if I skip around, you can see that you know it has no problem. It's not slowing down. Uh, if I jump on the bike and just go for a little ride. Look how many people are here as well. It's really, really well populated with traffic and people. I don't know if that changes if you drive around faster, does it? Does the game actually adapt that? Let's squeeze through this little gap. Probably some of those I can't show. Uh, let's have a look at the graffiti. Okay, a bit pixelated in the graffiti. Well, let's try when I'm here. So if I press the Stadia button and A, that takes me back to the uh, normal menu. Now, I did have an option to select Vulcan, but if you select Vulcan, it doesn't work. Um, so Vulcan isn't supported in this build. But if I go back from that, so you can see here, rendering resolution. I haven't changed anything else, everything else. it uh, Actually, I didn't turn on frame skipping, so frame skipping was on, but I haven't noticed it frame skipping. Uh, have we got, we've got FPS here somewhere. I'll show some other systems in a minute. N64 works pretty well as well. Uh, so FPS counter on and ah, go on. Let's go for let's go for five times and just see what happens. You can see it still looks. I don't know if you get much of a gain. It looks better on the bike, so that number plate looks a bit crisper. Uh, the wheels still look uh, angular, but I guess that's because it's such a low-res game. Look at the the detail on that watchtower in the background and the police car going past. Really, really impressive. And actually, this feels all right as well. Five times resolution. Let's drive around a bit and see if when it's trying to fill in different buildings and stuff like that, it suffers. Even the, um, the trousers he's wearing, the detail level on those just looks so good. Nice little move there. I just love driving around in this. If I stop as well uh, and look around, I was going to try and show you the... Some of the windows look really cool on some of the vehicles. See that, uh, whatever it is, like satellite type thing on the left hand side, they're spinning around really fast. Oh, that was a Porsche, that'll do. I think it's a Porsche, is that a Porsche? Just, just looks really good, plays really well. Look at the fence in the background, pretty detailed. Yeah, that is excellent. Right, let's try something else. So if I press the Stadia key, select and start, that takes me out to the main menu. This is a PSP mini game, so I won't show that because obviously that will run really well anyway. So Dreamcast on here, Tony Hawk's. And I haven't put any BIOS or anything on this. I'm not sure if it's running Redream uh, or Rycast or Flycast. In fact, if I press Stadia and A, that takes me back to this. Will this tell me? Core options. System, Naomi, maybe it's Naomi. And so video resolution is 640 by 480. I've been playing around with Dolphin on Android, which is really impressive, which is GameCube and Wii. Um, but uh, I just, I was so impressed with this. I just wanted to show it. Oh, it runs really well. I wonder if I can get this up to a better resolution. Let's try that. So home and A and core options and performance. Oh, that's only got frame skipping video. So I can probably put that up to say 720 and see if that makes too much of a difference. Oh, that's a lot. I'm not used to changing all of these different filters and things. I'm usually more 
for the Pi 4, I'm usually optimizing rather than trying to ramp things up. So quick menu and resume. Oh, I need to, I've just realized the audio. I've got Public Enemy playing in the background. I can't play that. There we go. Oh, it's not as good with that Public Enemy playing. Let's see if we can end on a nice trick. Where's that bar? Up here. Nice. Yeah, so very impressed with Tony Hawk's at 720. And PlayStation. And let's try a bit of Tekken 3. And I think I've already changed this. So yeah, Home and A in most things gets you to this menu. Uh, so core options and video. And I turned on, no, not video, GPU plugin. So I turned on enhanced resolution and that seemed to make things look a lot better. You don't notice it as much on Tekken, but you do on, on some other games. Although you can see that looks, that looks pretty crisp for PlayStation. Not the same. Oh, it's got a weird, it's got a bit of a weird look to it. You can see it's running at 60 FPS and looking pretty nice. So I wonder if I turn off that. Uh, so go back in. Core options, GPU, turn that off. Uh, and interlace video I turned on as well, uh, which also would enhance things. Well, in some ways that looks, be <laughs> that looks better. But on some of the other games, I'm sure it looked a lot better. Right, let's, let's skip out of that. Let's try another PlayStation game. What was I trying yesterday? Dave Mir showed it really well which is one of my favorite games of all time. Once again, I'm gonna to have to get rid of the music. So I guess it depends what type of game they're using as to when the graphics will looks better or not. So just experiment with those settings. But you can see on Dave Mirror, it looks awful. Uh, it's a brilliant game, but it looks awful like this. So you can see here, so remember what that looks like. And now if I skip out of that and go to core options, and GPU and turn on both of these. And when we go back, it looks completely different. See, it looks much, much more crisp. And if we start cycling around, you can see that it's looking great, performing well. I'm so used to playing this game and it just seems like playing on native, native hardware. So it's lovely and smooth, and the detail for a PlayStation game is super impressive. Looking really, really good. So let's try something else. Porsche Challenge, it definitely helped as well. More on the car than the track. So certain aspects tend to look better than others. It's actually really nice controls on this game. Uh, it has a very good split screen game, and uh, a mate and I used to play it years ago. Uh, he was better at gaming than me, but we played it so much that we were so similar uh, at the time, well let's just get into the game, that uh, yeah if one of us messed up the other one just won and there was there was a jump that you could you could really tuck someone up on. So that I guess this is without the enhancement on, yeah I think this is without the enhancement on <laughs> because they're looking pretty ropey. So if we go to core options, GPU, and let's turn on that enhanced resolution. Not, well, I suppose it did make some difference to the track, but the car looks a lot better. Um, so yeah, definitely an improvement on that. And again, doesn't seem to be suffering from it. Seems, well, it's just a solid 60 FPS. It could be pushed higher, I'm sure. Well, that car was waiting for me, that. Yeah, this is, re it's really nice handling. Really good sort of arcadey game, but uh, Nice, the slides and things like that. So that's some PlayStation games. Uh, let's go back in and show a bit of N64 because everybody asks about N64. Mario Tennis has a bit of slowdown. Um, I'm not sure if I can change that. It doesn't seem to affect the gameplay too much, but it does, it just gets a bit choppy. So let's just skip into game. We get some weird artifacts every now and then as well. Yeah, the, so the audio goes a bit, uh, a bit bad. But uh, the actual gameplay side of it, seems to work pretty well. You get some weird, yeah, some flickers and artifacts. Again, you can kind of mess about with this. You've got so many options, I guess. Oh, well, the, the settings isn't, isn't the same as in the other emulators. So it's not the uh, Stadia button and A to, 
to get out to it. So let's try something else. There is an option where you can press and hold on a game. Uh, so if I press and hold on this, you can see I can get some various different options on it. Advanced game options, but I don't think... You know, there are a few things in there you can change. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Right, let's do a bit of Destruction Derby. Now this game, I've always had trouble with on the Pi 4, uh, how it's just slow and uh, it seems to be one of the sort of lighting effects that really slows it down and it's it's a it's a good game to play so I've always tried it and I've always used it as a bit of a benchmark same with Excite Bike that also struggles on the Pi whereas loads of other N64 games are absolutely fine on the Raspberry Pi 4 but the start of this I've never had working well on a Pi 4 and on this it's it's really fast in fact I was surprised how fast it is feels like a different game or you've got to use the analog stick uh, so yeah it really and there's a bit on here when you come out of a tunnel and there's some lens flare and it and it almost slows to a halt on the Pi 4 Ooh. and I've never gone through that bridge that fast uh, and smooth you can see it's it's coping really well now where is the lens oh okay that wasn't the best but yeah this feels as it should, I would say. There you go, it's a bit of lens flare, but it's not seeming to slow it down. So I'm really pleased to see that working so well. Excite Bike, again, is another one that just tends to not work so well on emulation on some systems. It'd be great to see some fully loaded builds on arcade punks. Yeah, so again, it seems to be able to cope with those uh, those effects, like the exhaust. The smoke coming out of the exhaust looks decent and doesn't seem to slow down the system. And you can see I, as I skip forward and back, it seems to be coping with it really nicely. Oh, really happy with that. Toy Story 2 does work really well on the Pi. I haven't had trouble with it, but it's a really nice looking game and plays really well. Might have to get rid of the music on this. Here we go. I mean, that that just looks brilliant. Looks really crisp. No worries with that at all. Well, it's a great looking game, and it's just such a really good concept for the game. And uh, yeah, all the characters and everything. Can we get up on here? No. Nope. Let's just have a look around. But as you can see, very, very impressive. So Monk has mentioned in the comments that there's going to be an image uploaded with some controller fixes on it. If I get a link to that, I'll put it in the description because this is, is working really, really well. One little tip, uh, it's more difficult to get games on this build because the share folder seems to be locked, but Monk gave me a tip for that. It also doesn't seem to shut down for me, but if you press the start button and go to quit and suspend, and yes, because what I was doing was doing shutdown and then when the light went out, I was turning it off. But I did find that a few of my ROMs went missing uh, and I had to reflash the image. But if you put it to suspend, uh, it looks like it, well, the monitor stops working and it doesn't look like it's got any disk access. So then I turn it off at this point. And I'm gonna use my Raspberry Pi 4 for this because um, the Debian works better than any of the Linux versions on the Orange Pi 5 at the moment, which currently comes up on this screen. So I'm running my Pi on an SSD drive, so I'm going to put the SD card that I was running Batacera on into the SD card slot, and you can see that it comes up. And if I want to access the share folder, I can click on it and open with file manager. But what happens if I want to try and write to this folder? It doesn't let me. So I would normally go into the ROMs folder and uh, I would put some ROMs in there. So say for instance, this was, uh, well, I'll put, I'll put it in the Amiga folder because it's an Amiga ROM. Uh, so let's just paste that in. So you can see error opening file. Um, so that's because it's locked. I did try this with other file managers, but um, it was suggested to try Thunar and uh, I installed Thunar, which is just another file manager you can see here. Uh, and I just clicked on that and that installed. And then I open up a terminal, control alt T and type in sudo Thunar. So to launch it with sudo. And now I have access to it. So I can get that, can move that out of the way, not close it down. 
and now I have access to it. So I can go into the share folder and ROMs, try that same thing again and pop that in there. I know it doesn't go in there, but uh, this is just to show that it just works when you do that. So what I've been doing is copying over from uh, a little, well, actually this USB stick. So all my ROMs are on here and uh, they're in, this is a RetroPie USB stick or a RetroPie mount. So it's designed to be a, a where you put your ROMs on a USB stick and RetroPie reads from there. But if I want to transfer them over, so say for instance, I pick a Game Boy Advance game like WarioWare, which is amazing. And then I go back to share, go into ROMs, find the Game Boy Advance folder, which is down here. And then just copy, oh, I've already got it there, look. Uh, so, but I, then I can paste that in. So anyway, great work uh, to Monka for getting this build out so quick. And also just amazing performance on the Orange Pi 5. It is the best budget retro gaming machine I think you can buy. Uh, it's so powerful for the money. It's not going to have the compatibility of the Raspberry Pi uh, ever, I'm sure. But uh, certainly as the community gets behind it, lots and lots of things are becoming available. And uh, it'd be nice to see better Linux support. Again, it's such early days and Armbian did a great job, but to get GPU support and just it feeling, I mean, this system, uh, KDE Plasma that I use on my Pi 4 is lovely and fast. Uh, very robust, just everything works incredibly well. I've got this available as a separate download, but for the Pi 4. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.